Oh, getting a thumbs up. <laughs> How you like it? Love it? You love it? Nice. I'm just reviewing it. The Wagoneer's getting a thumbs up and I love it. That's cool. All of a sudden my ego's getting bigger. Hold on, let me stop it from hitting the ceiling. Previously on Accelerate, we reviewed the 2022 Ford Maverick. But today we've got the 2022 Jeep Wagoneer Series 3. So what is the Jeep Wagoneer? Well, to answer that question, we have to take a trip down memory lane and talk about 1908 and Willys Overland. You see, they were the second largest producer of vehicles in North America at the time, primarily due to the Jeep. The Jeep we all know, the Army Jeep, the Fun Jeep, the Jeep that everybody wants to buy. And that's what made them popular, and that was their first home run. Now, the 1940s came along, and their second home run was called the Willys Jeep Station Wagon. Yes. It was a station wagon and it was mass marketed for a very long time until the big three showed up in the 60s and said, we want some of that market. So Jeep decided to make the Jeep Wagoneer. And that's how it started. And it was sold like crazy and it built for 28 years until Range Rover showed up 18 years later and started pulling some of that market share back. So that's how it started. And here we are today with the 2022 Jeep Wagoneer. So there are two types of Wagoneer you can buy. You can buy the Wagoneer or you can buy the Grand Wagoneer. But don't worry, there's no difference in terms of body. There's no difference in terms of space inside. And pretty much they look very similar on the outside. The main difference is the luxury and the engine that you get to pick. But you also get something really interesting. You get a Wagoneer ambassador and that ambassador has 90 hours of deep, hard, tough training because you have to deal with clients. And yes, everybody gets this ambassador. It's like a concierge you get to have. They will even drop the car off to your house and you don't have to even talk to them. Everything can be done by email, by text, by however way you want to communicate. Because again, you are the customer. So there's two versions you can get currently in the regular Wagoneer. That is a Series 2 and a Series 3. And then in the Grand Wagoneer, you can get a Series 1, two, the Obsidian, and the Series 3. So the question is, where is Series 1 right now in a Wagoneer? Well, you can't get one because the way the world works is that it's so hard to get a vehicle today, so they just sell you the expensive stuff. And speaking of expensive stuff, this is what we have here today. This is a Series 3. So this is our top model of the Wagoneer. So just to reiterate what the difference between the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer is, it's basically like the Yukon and the Escalade. And we have reviewed them both for your viewing pleasure. So if you haven't watched those videos, please go ahead and do so. And don't forget to subscribe. So if we start at the front here, you'll notice that there's no word Jeep. It doesn't say Jeep anywhere. It says Wagoneer along the front here, which is very nice and classy. And the quality of this letters is really cool. The font they've used is really, really nice. It has a satin finish, so it's really sweet. So let's start with the headlight here. It does have your very similar to a Durango sort of look. Now I'll get in that Durango for one quick second because I wanna tell you, this is actually not built on an SUV platform. This is actually on a Ram platform with some slightly different rear suspension because they were gonna start with the Durango but then they changed their mind and decided to build this on a Ram. So this is very heavy duty, hard and tough and I got a lot of experience because I own a Ram. Anyways, back to the headlights here. It says performance LED. So if you take a look at it, it's a single LED and then a high beam next to it with the daytime running lights right across the top. Now moving on to the grill, it does have that classic Jeep grill. It also does have a camera here that does have a wash, wash or nozzle right underneath it to clean it off. It is sort of a multi-hole look. So unique because it's up here and it's also down here. It's got this really good front wide presence and you can definitely notice this thing in your review mirror when you're in front of it. Now it does have your radar right here as well and it does have these nice big tow hooks that aren't standard on all but on this model it is these nice big heavy tow hooks and underneath here it does have a lower valence that sort of looks sporty. It's really flat and wide. Kind of like it. You know what's an interesting thought? 
Stellantis should have named this their first vehicle ever. This thing looks like a stormtrooper. And if you guys think, comment below. If it says Stellantis here, that would be sort of different. It's sort of like strong name. So under the hood of the Wagoneer, you get a 5.7 liter Hemi that also has a 48 volt low end torque and the start and stop system to make it a little bit smoother. So that electric motor does help with that little boost off the line. It also has this little cool badge that says Wagoneer, born in America, designed in Auburn Hills and built in Warren, Michigan, which is about two hours from where we stand today. So we are close to you guys. We feel you. We need that American pride. Nonetheless, if you bought a Grand Wagoneer, you'd actually get the 6.4 liter Hemi and not this 5.7. You see the 5.7 is available in rear wheel drive and four wheel drive, and it's mated to an eight speed transmission. Now that 6.4 liter makes 471 horsepower and 455 pound feet of torque, whereas this 5.7 Hemi makes 392 horsepower and 404 pound feet of torque. So moving along the side here, yes, this is built on a Ram pickup platform. As I mentioned earlier, it is not on a Durango platform, so it is a frame with a body on top of it. So as we move along the side here, it does have 22 inch wheels. You can get them in 18s and 20s. It also, because it's a Series 3, has air suspension. So you have five different height levels with this air suspension. If you don't get air suspension, you basically get damping suspension, but in the back, it does have a load adjustment setting if you even if you don't get this the air suspension it does adjust up and down based on the load you have in the back let's check the fender inner fender linings with us because we always like to check it to see if it is plastic or it is carpet and this is carpeted for that extra quiet insulation now i like the fact they have the wagoneer also on the side here i really like this font the way this lettering is done it makes it look really, really really luxurious and yes it does have the wagoneer lighting down there so when you come at night you can see it is a Wagoneer. Now let's just test the sound when I open and close this door. And obviously that opens and closes. I would have liked to see that thing last a little bit longer so when I close the door, it doesn't go up as fast. Huh, now it did it. All joking aside though, take a look at the quality and how this is done. It's very seamless. It looks like it's part of the body. It's not like an attachment that sticks out that just comes out like a lot of other brands. I just like how clean it is and also how wide it is, just the way the design is. I open it up and my whole leg can pretty much fit on this thing. I don't have to do one of these like real side things. I can kind of stand here and I can get in pretty easily. Two tidbits about the Wagoneer. It is an eight passenger vehicle and you can also use the fob. to drop the car. That's pretty cool. For easy entry. Now I can get in and get out very easily. So this is a 26 and a half gallon tank that you could put in here. It is also, interestingly enough, capless. Now moving on the back, you can see it's very squared out. There'll be a lot of interior space. And one of the things that the Wagoneer claims is that it has the most interior space in its class and probably so because it's a very square very very boxy so even though that this has huge font they're actually pretty smart now because instead of putting these ugly things of awd and all that stuff they actually really clean here which says quadra dive 2 and on the other side it says series 3 but also how they've hidden the third brake light you see normally third brake lights would be sort of obvious here but they have this hiding really clean behind the glass Sort of a really unique back end. It's very flat, very boxy. They're sort of taking that boxy shape. Now let's check inside and see how much room we got because that's the important part. The most roomy cabin in its class. And I think you guys probably want to know how much room there is behind the third row. So if we measure from here, we've got just over two feet, 25 inches worth of depth with a third row. And we have 51 inches wide. So definitely really, really wide. A lot of people think four feet by eight feet. This is four feet right here. A lot of room. So you have an extra two and a half inch per side. Ooh, that's a lot. Let's get rid of this thing and show you how it looks like with the seats down. So in order to put these seats down, they have buttons here. You can adjust the third row as well as the second row. Now the third row is powered. So when I hit these buttons here, you'll see the third row going down. And then when I hit the buttons in front of it, right here, I hit the buttons and then there we go. The middle folds down and that one folds down. There we go, getting all three down. So how much room do we actually have from the back? Wow, I need a long measuring tape. This thing is like 18 feet long. Whew. 
Well, I got 94 inches, which is just about eight feet. I got eight feet. This thing is massive. It is huge. But you know what's cool? That they give you this. So this thing really is just a sort of a cover so that people don't break into your trunk and steal your Christmas gifts. But look how soft and nice this is. This is a nice thick plush carpet. Really quality, really luxurious. Because even in the back, because most people are gonna buy this and actually feel the back, just touching this with my hand. Very, very pillow-like. Really cool. Actually, I haven't seen anything as soft as, no matter what I've reviewed, the Range Rovers don't have this. And underneath here, you do have some storage along with sort of a rail system you have there. There's all your storage that you have there and you can pull this and then all your tools are underneath. Wow, they've actually done a really good job. I'm ultra surprised sitting back in the third row here. I got a ton of headroom. I have my own sunroof. So there's three panels of a moonroof here. There's one here and then there's obviously two in the front like most cars, but check this out. They've got a nice space for a nice big water bottle here, a little cubby storage spot. It does have a USB and a USB-C and it does have a recline button that I can simply just push and recline forwards and backwards. And it does have a Bluetooth microphone up here so I can talk. Pretty cool. This feels like a really, like a second row, not even a third row. A lot better than most third rows I've been in. Now look how much room I have. This is a ton of room. Now, obviously, no one's going to sit that upright, but when I pull this back, there's still a ton of legroom. Wow, this is very minivanish in terms of space, not SUV-ish. And also, I'm not low. A lot of these third rows sit very low. I'm sitting at a good height. My legs are at a good position. They've really thought about this third row. Now, you can get them in captain stairs. This one doesn't have it. This one has the 40-20-40, but you can actually get them in captain stairs in the second row. Another thing is visibility. When I'm back here, they're always really small. This is a really, really big window. So yeah, anybody selling these things have to shove everybody in the third row and then work their way forward. Second row time of the Jeep Wagoneer. Not as solid as I expected. Visually though, and when I touch it, really good quality materials. It also continues the airiness of this cabin from the back. It's just a lot of window space, not a lot of blind spots, no matter where I'm sitting in this thing. It does have a manual sunshade. These are not powered, but they're nice and big. This is the only spot in the vehicle you can get sunshades in these back two doors. Now this does have the Macintosh sound system, so you can either get them in 23 speakers if you get the grand, or you get them in 19 as the upgrade in the regular. And if you can't afford that, then you're stuck with nine speakers. Now the key part here is how many USB and USB-Cs or voltage outputs they have. So you have two USB-Cs, two USBs, a full plug-in, and then you have a cigarette lighter. But you also have display in the back here, so you can adjust your temperature. It does have three-zone climate control, heated seats on either side, three increments, and a ton of space with a pretty flat floor here in the back. Now, how much room do I have here? Well, I got two for some cup holders there. Not really, not really deep, but good enough. And yeah, just very comfortable. They're perforated on both of these, and this is not perforated in the middle. Very airy. Front seat time of the Jeep Wagoneer. Really interesting pieces here. So let's talk about this passenger side display. The last time I saw this was in a Ferrari. Awesome. So the way this works is that me as the driver, I can't see this display. The only way I can see it is if I was the passenger and their heads look in that direction. Similar to the heads up display I have in front of me, I can only see it. The passenger can't see it unless they're right here. Another cool feature they have is they actually have a safe in this center console here. Now you can use the key to unlock it if the battery's dead, or you have a code you can put there and then it'll unlock. So that is really cool. So you I thought you just push the button and it opens. No, you actually have to you hit this button. It's electronic and it opens wide up. And then there's a big, pretty much console, which does make sense because a lot of valuables are left in SUVs and people break in them and steal them, particularly Christmas presents or change. And underneath here, I do slide this back. And yes, another USB, USB-C. This has 24 different inputs, if I recall correctly. Seven different display screens. Just a lot of tech in this thing. They're really stepping up the tech game which is why I think they should call this the Stellantis. Nonetheless, if I start over here, it does have automatic windows on all four seats. It does have the lock, obviously, unlock. It's got two memory seats. It's got, obviously, automatic headlights. They turn left and right. It automatically brakes for you, keeps you in your lane, all the fun stuff. It does have a nice big digital display, and I'll get in that in a minute. It says Wagoneer right here. I can set my gear limit, which is pretty typical of uh, Ram Dodge Stellantis products. Nice big display. I'll get in that in a minute. Underneath that, they've got HVAC controls in piano black. They've got wireless charging for your phone right there. Nice big deep pockets. Um, it does have 
two cup holders and some bit of storage cubby and then your gear selector right here in sort of an analyzed stainless steel. This does have air suspension, so I do have five different increments as I mentioned. It does have different driving modes, rock, sand, snow, auto, and sport. And then you can mute your start and stop, your keep you in your lane, your stability program, also your, keep your steering inputs, all that stuff is all done over here. You can also shut off the passenger display with this button there. What else is there? Four wheel low and hill descent. Up here you've got your opening and closing of your sunroof. And pretty much that's kind of about it. The really, the really big thing here for me is the quality of the materials. It's a real step up. I really like the quality of this. And if I forgot to talk about, it does have a trailer brake hidden underneath here. Kind of cool to have that. But how are the seats? Now the seats are nice. They're pretty comfortable. Let's see if this does it goes up and down. Does it go in and out? Nope, it doesn't. Is there an adjustment? Oh, there. I lied. It does go in and out. New cars need a bit of love sometimes. Yeah, feels good. Nice and quality. The interior is really, really nice. Really impressed with the quality of it. Will it get beat up? It sort of has this enamel finish on the top, so I don't think so. Some of you might hate this piano black trim, but eh, it's not too bad. If you put this little gate up, mm, it takes a couple seconds to sort of go up. I think if you use this a lot, it'd probably just get worn out. Stellantis, put some WD-40 on this bad boy. Anyways. Time to talk about the screen. So around the actual screen, it, it's hard to tell where the screen starts and where the screen ends, which is nice because it shows that quality here. Now you'll see it's around the screen though, you have your heated seat adjustments and different zones. On my side here on the left, I do have a heated steering wheel. And on the right side for the passenger, they have the screen off button. But if we dig into the screen, you'll see you have your volume here and your volume there. And then you have your home button, media, comfort, nav, phone, vehicle, and apps. Now you can customize the screen. It's pretty typical to some other Ram Dodge products. You can slide this forward, or Chrysler products, I should say. They've sort of just customized it a little bit more for the Wagoneer. Now you have your surround camera, your outside temperature. These are basically shortcuts you can skip to. So if we start off at the top here, let me get this out of the way. You've got your nav, your Apple CarPlay, and then your phone. That's just the way I've structured it. So if you move up, you've got media. Again, you have satellite radio, FM, Bluetooth, and then USBs. Next, you have comfort, where you can adjust your temperature up and down. Pretty straightforward stuff. You can sync it together, and your fan speed, all that stuff. If you don't want to use the actual hard buttons you have below, you've got your touchscreen up there. Next up is your nav. Let's see how fast it is. I'll move my finger left and right. I will squeeze open. This is a 2022, so I expect it to be pretty fast. And yes, it does just that. And I can recenter to where I am. Next up is phone, that's your device manager. Vehicle is probably important for you guys to see, so let's start up at the top with vehicle. So my profile, safety and driving assistance, this is where you have your emergency braking, your lane management, your traffic sign assist, because it does have traffic sign uh, verification, and then you've got your park sense and all the different family stuff that you'd expect to have in such a big vehicle. This is cool though, you can adjust your electric power steering default to normal, sport, or comfort. Then power sidestep, do you want to store it to where you are or do you want to have it on auto? Hill start assist and then tire fill assist. Pretty cool that it alerts you when to fill your tires. Next up you have your clock and date, pretty straightforward stuff. Phone and Bluetooth. Next up is voice, navigation, trailer, camera, mirrors and wipers. This is when you can adjust that mirror to fold down when you put it in the car in reverse. That's a German thing and that is pretty cool to have. It's cool that you have all these customizations. Most people probably won't even do it, but the fact that it has it sort of gives you that luxury feel, including adjusting your cornering lights. Next up is brakes, where you can actually set your auto parking brake when you put it in park. Then door locks, this is pretty straightforward stuff. If you want the honk to honk, your personal settings linked to key fob, which is important to have. Power lift gate alert, which essentially just beeps and makes this fancy sound when it's going up or down. Next up is seats and comfort. Kind of important stuff, easy exit seats. So when you open the door, shut the car off, the seat will move back so you can get in and out easily. And then you can set up your recline lockout for your third row. Kind of important stuff to know. And this is probably the most important piece because you can set the vehicle to actually drop every time you get in and get out. That is cool to have. So the suspension is important in the suspension port portion because you do have air suspension. Then next is audio, notification, Sirius XM. You can block explicit stuff. Well, who really cares about all that stuff? And at the end of the day, that is just 
basically a whole lot of customization that you can do to your car. At the end of the day, you really just want your heated seats, your heated steering wheel on when it's cold, and your satellite radio. So this is the 360 view camera. Here's a really funny portion of it. There's your 360 camera overhead, your rear view camera, and obviously when I turn the steering wheel, that turns. But check this out. This is straight out of a RAM. Now it doesn't give you a RAM, but it gives you the camera that's above it. Check the difference between this one and this one. There's no difference except this one is just expanded larger. That is pretty funny. Crazy, same thing. There's your back, there's your front, and there's your shortened front. I just find that really funny. <laughs> oh, Rab. That's enough about this. Let's take a jump into the driver display. So if we start at the top here, you have your main menu right there as number one. Very, very easy to get to it. Pretty much up or down, left or right. So now I really only have two choices. The first one is obviously this, the digital display and my tack, and then I have my driver assist right there. When I move down to number two, that's vehicle info. This is where you have your range, your, your temperature, all that fun stuff. Just a lot of data they give you, your tire pressure, and then of course your start and stop. Next up is your trip info, different trip meters. Fourth is your nav. The fifth one's pretty cool. It's your off-road setting, which is basically your air suspension modes and different four-wheel drive systems you have, your trailer tow, your audio, your messages, your settings, and then of course back to your main menu. So pretty cool, very easy to use, nothing too deep. Just very simple, straightforward digital display. On the left, I have my temperature gauge. On the right, I have my gas gauge. And then you have some of your driver settings right there. So that's enough for the digital display. Let's take this thing on the road and see how it is to drive. All right, so we are driving the Wagoneer. Very soft, off the bat, very soft. Now, this electric motor does help to start and stop when I pulled off right there to make it smoother. It feels very solid, very similar to the, to the Denali, which is basically what we compare this against Yukon Denali because it has all the luxury amenities in it. And I will say this has better visibility, especially in the back because those long windows and the design of this thing makes it feel very open and airy when I'm driving it. Very similar to my Ram, except my Ram is definitely more stiff. This is way softer, way, way softer. I always felt like pickup trucks were good and they were soft and they were, you know, I don't want to say luxurious, but they did a good job feeling, holding back on the bumps and the bruising of the roads. But this thing is very soft. So how does it drive on acceleration in normal roads? Pretty much the same as every other domestic truck for the most part. It is softer. I can definitely feel I'm turning. It is softer. I, the, the GMs are a little bit more steering direct. This is very cushiony, bubbly, lazy boy couch. Can you not see this big, huge white truck? I almost got killed there. A normal shoot day for us ranges anywhere between five and a half to seven hours of filming for you guys. But this one we only have for two hours, so we're sort of trying to ram it all together. So if this video feels rushed, we apologize. We just try to get this video out to you as fast as we can. Now if you watch, you will see how bubbly it is. Not the most direct feel, it's starting to get it. But maybe if I put this air suspension in sport, and drop it to as low as I can, then we'll wake up and tighten up. Foot on the brake, foot on the gas. Decent. Good brakes, really strong brakes. Now I'd suspect that's somewhere around seven seconds, zero to 60. Now when you get the Grand, you get the 6.2 liter Hemi, obviously that makes more power, and that can propel this big beast to about 60 in about five and a half seconds, which is pretty fast, which is definitely faster than this, which I would say is about seven, maybe 6.8, 6.7, somewhere around there. Didn't feel overly fast, but sort of feels typical like most domestic stuff, as I mentioned earlier. Visibility is really good, as I mentioned, you can see all the way around. Suspension is nice and soft. Steering is a little bit softer than I'd like, but it is what it is. Maybe with the damping suspension, it's not as soft with this air suspension. Kind of hard to tell because I haven't driven one yet. This is the first one I've driven. But yeah, I think it's the design on the outside that really grabs people, right? The look of it on the front looks like, as I mentioned, the stormtroopers, and in the back sort of looks like a vampire. So this does have the convenience package, which includes driver drowsiness alert. So if I'm falling asleep at the wheel, it'll wake me up. Now, how much does this thing cost? This thing costs $100,000 Canadian. It starts in the 80s, but the way this is loaded up, because it is a pretty loaded Series 3, it costs 100 k 
So here's my final take on these things. I think if you need an eight passenger and you're willing to spell 100 grand, there's probably like three or four choices you can pick. But I think it's all about the styling on the outside and some of the interior features that you may want to buy. If the safe's a big deal and the way the outside looks, you're buying this thing. And the interest rate is right. And whatever you're doing to buy it makes sense, whether it be the rate or the residual or whatever, then you're going to buy it. Or somebody you know at the dealership that serviced you really well. That's all it's going to take. For new entrants to the space, they're really going to like the quality of this thing, the way the design looks. Not a ton of screens. There's a lot of good hard buttons here. It's not like the Escalade, which is all basically one screen. It's a lot of touching, not a lot of hard buttons. This has a lot of hard buttons, so there's a win there. And yeah, I think the interior of this specific one is really nice. I just like the way this really light gray matches everything else. It's a really good feel here. So the biggest hurdle I see here with the Jeep Wagoneer is the exposure. I think people from other brands will definitely not know that the Jeep Wagoneer exists. The Jeep Loyalists will definitely know one because when they see it in the showroom, they'll be like, hey, what's that? And then they'll get more info. But from the outside looking in, the only way to actually capture people's attention is obviously somebody owning one but then the outside. And then they think, hey, I can get an eight-seater Jeep and haul my family around. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.